Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. It looks like Dillian White is firming up as the favourite to be the opponent for Anthony Joshua's next fight, potentially mid-2023, with Eddie Hearn saying in a number of different interviews and podcasts, and here's one quote, if a deal can be reached with Dillian White, I think that would be a smart fight for both. Also telling the volume sports, the Anthony Joshua vs. Dillian White rematch is the front runner for AJ's next fight in July, Eddie Hearn has declared. So this is a fight that has looked likely. Dillian White has been calling for it. It's been talked about for potentially mid-2023. And it did look like Anthony Joshua may go another direction, forcing Dillian White to look elsewhere. But seemingly, this is shaping up as the, the fight. And potentially for both guys, it makes the most sense. For Dillian White, it's the biggest sort of money that's out there for him right now. And for Anthony Joshua, let's face it, after the Jermaine Franklin performance where he was a little bit tentative, sometimes didn't want to pull the trigger, certainly didn't look like the aggressive Joshua that he said he would be. This is the sort of fight with White seemingly on the decline now, looking a bit washed, you know, based on recent performances that Joshua could have and look good in. And I would hazard a guess he'd get a knockout against Dillian White in that fight. And when you do compare, and someone made this point, the performances of White and Franklin and Joshua and Franklin, I think Joshua did do a better job. I know Dillian White saying, and he's been a little bit miffed, that his name was used for part of the promotion for Joshua Franklin. Effectively, DAZN and others were effectively making out that White had lost to Franklin and they were trying to big up Franklin, basically saying he shouldn't have lost that fight against White. I had White winning, but it was a close fight, much closer than Joshua Franklin. But I do think that this is always the sort of in-house type of fight that will make a lot of money for them. Although, as a fan, do I necessarily want to see it? Yeah, I mean, we have been there, done that, got the postcard. There was a knockout and a conclusive ending the first time around, albeit, what, about six or seven years ago. So you can make a case that there is some room for it. But for me, it's more careful matchmaking than anything for Joshua, and it gets the payday that White is clearly seeking. He just wants to make money now. He's made that very clear, investigating a potential Chisora fight, Chisora 3, which I think no one really needs to see either. He knocked Chisora out in the second fight. So moving on. So hot off the press, you've had Frank Sanchez getting a first round stoppage against Daniel Martz. This was on the prelim portion of the Fundora card. So Frank Sanchez had Martz down three times in the round before a hard right hand ends the night. The first two knockdowns, a little bit dubious. It is Daniel Martz after all. He sometimes doesn't really come to fight. So no surprises about the win here, but it's a random one. Hopefully Frank Sanchez is going to be in a much bigger and better fight moving forward because otherwise, well, what's the point? You've got Otto Valin's promoter, Dimitri Salita, not happy with Otto Valin being absent from the top 10 of the Ring Magazine rankings. And this is the rankings. It's actually a top 11. They have Alexander Usyk as the champion, followed by the 10 next best. So not a whole lot of movement within that 10. But you've got Salita saying, based on what merit is White, Parker and Hergovic in front of Otto Valin? Well, I actually think that there's a case for all of those guys to be in front of Otto Valin because at the end of the day, if you're going to be in the top 10, you've got to fight decent opponents, of which Otto Valin has not really been doing, not to the same level as those other fighters in the past three or four years. If you actually go and have a look at BoxRec and you look at some of the, the fights and the, the names, Otto Valin has, has fought Dominic Brazil, and that's his only half-decent win that really puts him in the conversation for a ranking. Apart from that, there's nothing really there. He's been largely inactive, calling and begging for a fight. I think this is a results-based top 10, and Otto Valin does simply not have the results. Hergovic was mentioned there, and uh, he says that he will destroy Anthony Joshua if he gets his chance. So saying to ID Boxing... I destroy him. I think I destroy him. If he comes in in shape, as in the Franklin fight, I'll destroy him. My boxing skin, skill, my chin, my speed, my power, everything. 
And seemingly there's a lot of fighters who believe that right now. And Jared Anderson, who uh, is about to fight in a couple of hours as I record this video, he believes that uh, Joshua hasn't been the same since the Ruiz knockout loss. And I totally agree with that. So he says, I think he looked better than his last fights. And this is after, you know, talking about the Franklin and Joshua fight. But I still don't think he beats Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury. And asked why he hasn't looked like his old self, the 23-year-old, pointed to the punishment he endured nearly five years ago. He says Andy Ruiz knockout. And I think based on the evidence of the fights that we've seen since then, yeah, Ruiz changed Joshua. No doubt about it. Meanwhile, Eddie Hearn has questioned why Daniel Dubois will be facing Alexander Usyk rather than Joe Joyce, his stablemate at Queensbury. He says, I like Daniel Dubois, but who on earth has he beat to become mandatory for Alexander Usyk? Trevor Bryan, Kevin Lorena, and Bogdan Dinu. Fair play to Dubois, but I think Joe Joyce should be getting a shot well ahead of him, but good luck to him. And actually, I agree with that. I think many others would. After all, Joe Joyce beat Daniel Dubois, has continued to stay and remain unbeaten, and knocked out Joseph Parker in 2022. He certainly got the more deserving resume. Frank Warren, with a number of comments in his latest column um, that we will touch on. So he talks of that fight with uh, Jermaine Franklin and Anthony Joshua, weighing in on that whole situation. Jermaine Franklin would have been drafted in to boost the confidence of the fawn, former unified champion following three defeats in his last five fights. The event was designed to make him look good, show he is still a force to be reckoned with, and encourage the public to demand a heavyweight showdown against the likes of Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder. Instead of banishing demons, old nagging doubts have resurfaced. Wise counsel is suggesting he takes a couple of more routine assignments. Let's put it this way. I'm not anticipating an urgent call to open negotiations for a Tyson title defense against Joshua in the near future. I might, I might be wrong. So we will see. I am all ears. It wasn't the worst performance, but the boxing world wanted to see Joshua throw off the shackles of self-doubt and recapture his former glories. Instead, he now seems mired in caution over fear of either being chinned or gassing out, which tends to have the same end result. So I've got to say with what Frank Warren is saying there, I know some Joshua fans, the real ardent died in the wool Joshua fans won't agree with that, but I think Warren is spot on with that commentary. Uh, moving on to a couple of other different uh, things that he talks about in his column. The fight between Joe Joyce and Zhang Jilei on April the 15th at the Copper Box. It's a fight that brings with it real jeopardy and falls nicely into the must-watch category. The Chinese giant is coming in off a loss against the highly touted Filip Hergovic, but outside of the Croatians team, I've yet to come across anyone who thinks Zhang didn't win that IBF final eliminator. And I'll just weigh in there. It certainly was close, and a lot of people had Zhang winning or at least at best it being at worst it being a draw. Zhang now gets the chance to jump the queue with the WBO while Joe has abandoned caution by taking on a proper fight while he waits to cash in his interim chips for the hard currency of a full world championship belt. I believe Joe is now an elite heavyweight and ready to storm through the, the division. The public would love to see him in with the likes of Tyson, Deontay Wilder, Alexander Usyk and Joshua with a sizable majority tipping him to emerge successful. If he does a job on Zhang, it might it might well be the case that he will tempt Tyson into a defense of his WBC treasure. Tyson is overseas at the moment, so I'll be catching up with him soon to plot out his next moves. As far as Usyk is concerned, his next assignment is already mapped out and goes by the name of Daniel Dubois. I know there has been some convenient conjecture over Daniel's fitness following the knee injury he sustained last time out, but he is fighting fit, ready to go, and will not let his opportunity for a triple title assault pass. I'm not sure it's the whole convenient conjecture thing, making out like fans questioning it is a bad thing, because they said he would, and he was injured in December in that fight against Kevin Lorena, needs six months. It's not six months at this point, but I guess by the time of a potential fight, it could be. So make of that what you will, but Dubois could uh, barely, you know, hold himself up in the ring at times and had to be assisted from the facility. So Frank Warren continues, we are currently in talks over where and when, and I'm majorly confident that Daniel can live up to his obvious promise and overwhelm the highly skilled Ukrainian. He possesses the tools to do it. His jab is a potent weapon, and any heavyweight in the world is in big bother if he lands on them. 
So with Joyce Zhang and Usyk Dubois firmly in the pipeline, we are in the process of putting together a blockbuster run of heavyweight fights, especially when we get Tyson up and running again. So we'll leave it there. He talks about David Adelaide, but we'll, uh, we won't cover that. But his other recent big heavyweight signing, he's also told Boxing Scene, we're going to have eight fights this year. We're going to keep him busy, busy, busy and get his experience up. I think he's capable of doing that. Obviously, I'll look at each fight and make a decision whether to push him or not. But I think he's capable of that volume of fights this year. And actually, I went to his box rec to see had they had an opponent, remembering the first two have been absolute tin cans and no good, um, ended in the first round. And he's listed to be facing Konstantin Dobashenko. And for those that haven't seen Dobashenko fight, he's notoriously durable. He's a guy that will give you hard rounds and can take shots, he knows how to cover up, but he also does have a little bit of venom in him. And that in different fights, I mean, he rocked Vladislav Serenko. He just recently fought uh, Jose Ladaway and it went all eight rounds. Actually, um, you had Dobashenko coming into the fight as that one wore on. So this is a huge step from the trash that he's been facing. And I wonder if that's, I mean, that's quite a big step up. Dobashenko is generally a guy that a lot of, you know, up and coming heavyweights have been fighting between when they're between about eight and 15 fights. And he will give a good account of, uh, of himself. And while he's got those 12 losses, he has never been stopped. So it's a massive step up. And I'd also note Moses Itoma, who is 18, this is would be his third fight. His weight, you know, for a guy who's what, 6'4", six, 6'5", 248 and 249 for his first two fights so it's gone up a, a pound and a half from the first one just keep an eye on that because is that going to be a problem i mean generally a lot of uh, heavyweights when they start out uh, they will be more in the sort of late 220s or 230s and they slowly come up and wait over the course of their career and sometimes that's because they're you know getting into their man strength and filling out and that sort of thing but uh, Itoma already starting a little high for a guy you know I just think keep an eye on that and uh, rounding up this uh, heavyweight news and notes mashup video Charles Martin has announced that his fight against Gergen Hovhannisian, which was to take place on the Tank Davis Ryan Garcia undercard, is not happening because Hovhannisian is injured. That's a shame because that was looking to be a really interesting fight. Hovhannisian coming off a really good win over Michael Polite Coffey. Charles Martin making his way back from a loss against Luis Ortiz at the start of 2022. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.